The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Master Quest, a fun alternate version of a well of classic meant to challenge those who desire more, well, a challenge, while also playing Ocarina of Time. This is accomplished by changing around the puzzles in the dungeon, and it was even made more challenging by mirroring the world in the 3DS remake. I've been playing the latter version recently, and that combined with researching the Nintendo 64 disk drive made me curious as about, about its origins. It's thought that Master Quest began its life as Ura Zelda, an expansion of Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64 disk drive that would have included a redesigned, redesigned dungeons, in addition to new ones and even new enemies. Unfortunately, because the 64 disk drive tremendously failed, the expansion was never released. I want to mention right quick, though, that Ura Zelda was not the only expansion for Ocarina of Time in development. There was, there were actually two. One, of course, being Ura Zelda, with the other being called Zelda Gaiden which eventually went on to become Majora's Map. Urizada would have worked by plugging Ocarina of Time into the cartridge slot on the Nintendo 64 and inserting Urizada into the disk drive that would have rested below. The expansion, um, once the game was turned on, would have added a little icon to the title screen letting you know you were about to play Urizada. It's my understanding that through the use of cheats and or game chart code, you can actually trick the game into thinking one of your save files is an Urizada save file. This will make it grayed out and put a little tag attached to it that says disk. Tricking the game again uh, in order to open the file will, unfortunately, crash the game. Because of recurring delays in the production of the 64 disk drive, and is also a bet between Eiji Onoma and Shigeru Miyamoto, where if the former could create a game within a year, they would not have to make a Zelda, the expansion was ultimately scrapped for the peripheral add-on. But because the size of the game was also beyond what a 964 cartridge can handle, it never saw its, a release as its own game, unlike Zelda Gaiden did. It's believed that fans had wanted and begged Nintendo for long enough that they eventually released a modified version of, of Zelda, as well as Ocarina, as a bonus for, per, for pre ordering Moon Waker. I've been talking of Zelda as being theorized to be Master Quest because there's actually evidence to support that it's not. One big piece that a lot of people use includes the fact that ripping the ROM of Master Quest actually shows the game to have the same amount of megabits as Ocarina of Time. Meanwhile, Ura Zelda held content that was supposed to be far beyond what the Nintendo 64 cartridge could have handled. Another reason is that the cartridge version of Ocarina of Time still, had re still held remnants of the 64DD expansion it was supposed to have, but these remnants were removed upon porting the games to the GameCube disc. This is not only why I choose to call Master Quest what I did, but also why Urizelda is more often than not referred to as the game that never was. Pure speculation on my part, but it could be that Nintendo didn't want to go digging into what a revolt they may have kept the development disc in just to get it out and transfer everything onto a GameCube disc, so they opted instead to just make the dungeons harder. Could also have been a decision they had made too close to Wind Waker's launch for them to rework the entirety of Ura Zelda onto a GameCube disc without having to hurry. Although it is my understanding that Ura Zelda was near completion before it was scrapped, but you know, what can you do? And before you go and say that they still could have added the new enemies, I really don't think they could have, because it probably still would have taken a lot of work and time to do, because they'd have to have taken the data from the disc, put it onto, the, set it into the game, set the game onto the GameCube, make sure everything worked fine and dandy, so it doesn't crash. Some years back, there were attempts by someone named Zeph to revive a form of Ura Zelda called The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Ura Expansion. The concept itself was a sequel about Talker in Time loosely based on Ura Zelda, wherein Gandorf discovers a great power in the sacred realms, where it creates a timeline where the Hero of Time does not exist, so the goddesses awaken a Hero of Light to try to fix the flow of time. Unfortunately, the project was officially cancelled in 2013, but what has been released to the public is remarkable considering what assets they had and all the new content they were putting in. All in all, it's quite Interesting to think that Urizelda quite possibly could have been the thing had the Nintendo 64 disk drive been a success, or had they just cut down the file size to fit the cartridges. But the last part probably would have cut out a lot of cool content, just to not exceed the maximum, so there is that.
I do hope one day, though, that we do actually get at least more information on what Urizado would have been like. Just because I honestly, after all this research, want to know more. It's literally half the reason that I do this series, because I can't help but wonder what could have been. But all I found on the game is pretty much what I've been able to bring you through these words.